Alright, let's get into what we're going to do today then. So we're going to start um, talking about one-sided limits and then I'm going to also look at uh, some graphs and things too. Uh, I guess I can unfreeze that. There we go. Okay. So we're start looking at something called one-sided limits, which we kind of already talked about. And then I also have some graphs for us to look at as well. Okay. Okay, let's get into that in just a second. Here we go. Uh, there we go. All right, and we're just going to jump into the definition of one side limit, or kind of like the, I guess, the. Yeah. All right. So. There's two different sides to a limit that we can evaluate. So we can talk about the limit from the right. Okay, so I'll put that in quotes. The limit from the right in English. And that means that X approaches C from values. that are blank than C. Okay, so we're going to fill in that blank there. So again, if we, if we think about this, right, limit from the right. So we're coming at, at that X is approaching C from that right-hand side of C. We're coming in from the right. So those values are going to be what in relationship to C? Greater than. Greater than. That's exactly right. So the idea is we're approaching C from values that are greater than C. Okay? Anytime in a number line, if you're on the right of a certain number, then you're at a number greater than the number. Okay? If you're to the right of it. And then, like on the, oh, sorry, the uh, way that we denote that is the limit as X approaches C, and we put a little plus sign where, like, the exponent would be. All right. So look like that. All right. Um, remember, C again is just like the generic number that we like approach in any particular limit. Okay. Well, that means approaching C from the right, the limit from the right. And then likewise, you know, we can have a limit from the left. Okay. And that means that X approaches C. Uh, from values that are less than C. Okay, it makes sense. If you're on a number line and you're like at a number C and you look to the left of C, those values are going to be less than C. So we're approaching from the left, those values are less than C. And then here you might be able to guess, right, that it's going to be the limit as X approaches C. And then instead of a plus sign in the exponent, we're going to put a little negative sign. All right. And the unfortunate thing about the way that we denote this limit, so people for the one-sided limit here with the, from the right, that don't, people don't get that confused very much. But the one-sided limit from the left confuses people because they see that negative sign and they immediately think that C is just, it's just negative C. Like we're approaching, X is approaching negative C. So be very careful here. Be very careful, okay? Be careful about where that negative sign is. Don't make a mistake. I'm thinking this is X approaching negative C. It's X approaching C from the left. Okay, so watch where that negative sign is. Don't just glance over it and get it wrong then because, you know, you weren't paying attention. Okay. So let's just jump in and just evaluate some limits here. Okay. <coughs> and so let's just come up with one here. So we'll say the limit as X approaches okay. and you see here, right? Some people might be tempted to read this real quickly and say it's the limit as X approaches negative one. No. 
Okay, so limit as x approaches positive 1 from the left. Okay, be careful. Um, and let's say that it's um, x squared minus 3x plus 1. And so we haven't yet evaluated a limit from one side or the, from left side or the right side, right? I told you what, like, how it's denoted, but it's like, how do we actually evaluate it? Well, one way we can do it is using our graphing calculators, right? Like, kind of numerically here. So if I go to my graphing calculator, I already have the x squared minus 3x plus 1 typed into my graphing calculator. And so then I'll try to approach 1 from the left-hand side here. Let's see, I'll delete out some of these old values. Okay, so let me try approaching one from the left-hand side. So let's see, approaching one from the left-hand side means I need to approach from values that are less than one. So I could try like 0.9, for example. That's a little bit less than one. Or I could try point, and it's like, okay, that's maybe not very clear. Let's try 0.99, a little bit closer to one, still less than one. All right, that's looking like we're getting some kind of convergence there. Let's try 0.99. Ah, okay. Let's try 0.999, 9999. And let's just try a bunch of nines. And let's just try one. Okay, and in fact, the calculator at this point, me typing all those point nines in, it just says it's one. Now if I go over here, it just says it's negative one. When really it's rounding, right, we can see that the calculator value actually is negative point nine 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 nine, but it just displays negative one. And then finally, when I actually type in one, it just gives me negative one. And so we can say here that the limit is negative one. Okay. Now, how else might we have gotten this answer? What else could we have done besides using our calculators here? Okay. Yes, substitution. Plug it in. Okay. Just like, just like when we evaluate a normal, not left-hand or right-hand limit, just an, a normal limit. Okay. We can try direct substitution, uh, and it normally it works for these nice continuous functions, right? This thing's a parabola. There's no like jumps, holes, or gaps or anything like that we have to worry about. And so the limit will be uh, the same as it is plugging it in, finding that function value. Okay. So yeah, it's you can just do direct substitution here. So likewise, uh, if we do this same problem, but now if we approach one from the right, and we'll just do the same same function here, what do we expect the answer would be here? Negative 1 as well, right? Because, again, we're just going to try direct substitution. There's nothing like weird or funky about this, and so negative 1 would be our answer. Okay. <coughs> but we're not satisfied with that because it's like, well, what's the point of learning about one side limit if it's just the exact same thing as, you know, the overall limit, right? Who, who cares? Like, these are the exact same, you know, where, where's the... Where's the interesting stuff, okay? Well, so let me just summarize here. For a continuous function, okay, uh, use direct substitution. Okay, there's not a whole lot of, like, weird stuff going on with this function, so, uh, you know, we can just direct substitute. All right, but let me try another function here. Let's come up with something different. Let's say we got a function f of x, and it is equal to x squared minus 5 for x values um, less than 1. Oh, sorry, not less than 1. Let's say less than 3. And let's say it's equal to x, 2x plus 5 for x values greater than or equal to 3. Okay, so a nice little piecewise function there, right? We love these things. Right, we haven't gotten to that problem yet. I'm just establishing the function, sorry. So then let's do the uh, limit now as x approaches um, 3 from the left of f of x.
So, if we're approaching three from the left, which part of our piecewise function should we use here? Okay, first part. So is that why the first one? Because um, they're left of three, then left of one. Uh huh. Okay, so so we've got our three. We're approaching three from the left. Those are values that are less than three. What do we? Where do we evaluate the values that are less than three? Right here in x squared minus five. So then, what's our what's our solution going to be here? What is the limit going to be? Four. Yeah. So we are going to use this top piece, and we're going to evaluate it by plugging in three. Okay, we're going to plug in that 3. So it's going to be 3 squared minus 5, so 9 minus 5, which is 4. Okay. Some of you might be thinking, but Mr. Whitmire, we can't plug in 3 because this is not true when x is 3. This part is true when x equals 3. Why did you plug a 3 in here? It's because we are evaluating a limit. In evaluating a limit, we are, we are observing what happens as x approaches 3. So we're approaching 3. We never actually get to 3. But we get so close that it's basically 3, which is why we're allowed to plug 3 into that piece. Okay. That's the idea. So, uh, let's try another one. Alright, what about... Well, actually, here, you guys try this one here. Okay, so try this one. The limit as x approaches 3 from the right. <coughs> Go ahead and find the value as x approaches 3 from the right of f of x. And then I also want you to evaluate the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x as well. So try those, those two that I just wrote up there. Okay. Number 4, number 5 there. Give those a try. What's the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of f of x? And what's the limit as x approaches 3? Not left or right, this is what's the limit as x approaches 3? Of f, of x. Okay, let's go to Carolyn. Carolyn, number four, what'd you get? 11. 11, okay, how'd you get that? Okay, and how do you know that three here had to go into that second part? Right, okay, we're approaching three from the right. That's from values that are greater than three. For the values that are greater than 3, we're going to plug in to the 2x plus 5 there. So, yep, it'll be 2 times 3 plus 5, which is 11. And so, yeah, it's 11. Okay. All right. How about number 5? I'll take volunteers for this one. Number 5, what do you think? What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? Okay. Does not exist. Why do you say that? So 3 from the left is 4, 3 from the right is 11. So the behavior from the left does not agree with the behavior from the right. So the overall limit, you're right, does not exist. Even though the value of the function exists, even though we have it, f of 3 is 11. The limit does not exist. Wait, why? Because the behavior, as you approach from the left and as you approach from the right, disagree. Remember the limit 
does not is not concerned necessarily with the value of the function at the point three. It's what's happening as you approach. The left hand approaches four. The right hand approaches eleven. How do you choose between four or eleven? You can't. They're two different numbers, and so the limit does not exist. Okay. That's the idea. Okay. The function exists. Function exists, but the limit does not exist. This one right here? Yeah. Yes. The limit as x approaches 1 overall would be negative 1. What's the difference here, Bryn? In this one, this function is nice and smooth and continuous, right? This one, it's going to have a jump. And where does it have the jump? At x equals 3. It's going to jump from here to here. They're not connected. They're separate from each other. If you were to graph this, these two pieces would be disconnected at 3. Maybe a jump or something like that. There, there is a way possible to write piecewise functions where they join up, right? And stuff like that. But in this case, it's not. So we'll look at it All right. Very good. Very good. All right. Let's uh, take a look here. I just I don't want to make sure we make this too uh, hard, but okay. The limit is x approaches five of f of x. How do we evaluate this one? The limit is x approaches 5 of f of x. Jane? Exactly right. Yeah, so don't get, don't get thrown off. Okay, we don't always evaluate. We don't always evaluate here where it switches. Sometimes we'll evaluate, you know, within a part. So, for example, the limit as x approaches 5, 5 is greater than or equal to 3, and including, you know, values both to the left of 5 and to the right of 5, they're going to be greater than or equal to 3. And so we're going to evaluate it right in here, and you can just do a direct substitution. 2 times 5 plus 5, which is going to be then 15. So that's no problem. Same thing if I also wanted to evaluate the limit as x approaches negative 5, Okay, which piece of our piecewise function would we evaluate that in? Yeah, we, we evaluate it in the other piece, right? The other piece there. Okay, so it would go in the x squared minus 5. So it would be negative 5 squared minus 5, which would then be just 20. Okay, very good. All right, now I have graphs around. Ah, there they are. Okay, so let me pass out some graphs here that we're now going to look at. I'm going to use these to evaluate some limits graphically. Okay, we've already kind of done this one. What? We're going to do a little more. Okay, so now let's take a look at these two different piecewise functions that I have graphed. And we're going to name them here. I'll call this one f of x, and I'll call this one down here g of x. Okay, so two to graphs, but we're going to use both of these uh, uh, later. Right now we're just focused on f of x. Okay, but f of x is everything you see here, right? This little dot up here, this little line down here, you can assume, right, that there's an arrow there and an arrow here. And I think we're counting by ones. You can barely see it, but it is counting by ones here. Okay. Um, and then same thing, th same thing down here but for g. I mean, we can assume that there's like an arrow probably there and an arrow probably there continuing on. Okay, all that good stuff. All right. <coughs> So now let's just, again, get some practice in with, like, using graphs to, excuse me, um, identify limits and evaluate limits. And we'll do some one-sided limits here. All right, so number one, let's do the limit as x approaches What does this say? One, positive 1 from the left. Right, again, don't read that as negative 1. That is not negative 1. Be careful. <coughs> okay. 
So let's look here, right? Okay, so we want to approach, x is approaching 1 from the left. So here's my x value of 1. If I look at my graph here, I've got some kind of interesting stuff going on here. I have a jump, all right? But we're approaching 1 from the left. That means from values that are less than 1. Well, if I go to the left of 1, it's this part of my graph. And as I come in closer and closer and closer to 1 from the left, what's the y value that I'm approaching here? Negative 2. Okay, it's all negative 2 because that's all constant there. So the answer is negative 2. Okay. Well, of course, the limit as x approaches 1 then from the right. We're going to do that one as well. Okay, again, I'm going to locate there's 1 on my x-axis. Here's my graph right around that one, but again, we're approaching one from the right. That means I need to come in from values, or so, come in from the right of one, values that are greater than one. So this piece of the graph right in here, okay? And as I approach one from the right, what's the y value that we're approaching here? Negative one. Yep, you got it. Okay. The y value that we approach as we have our x values approach one from the right is negative one. Question? Are you okay? Brent? Yes? Negative two. We're approaching, so here's the x value of one. We're approaching that from the left side of one. So these like values over here are to the left of one, which means we're on this part of the graph. Because these are the, these are like the x values that are less than one right here. Right? And so we approach that, here's the x value of 1, we're approaching that from the left. As we go closer and closer and closer, the y value is always going to be that negative 2 there. So it's just negative 2. Okay, but here as we, as we approach from values to the right of 1, that's going to be this part of the graph, which is then again approaching from the right, we're going down, 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 and then we are approaching negative 1, so it's going to go to negative 1. Alright, so then, what's the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x? Does not exist. Okay, here it's maybe easier to see visually, right, that left-hand limit and the right-hand limit, they disagree. There's no agreement, so the limit does not exist. Okay. All right, so let me, guys have, let me have you all try three here. All right, so let's have you do the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left of f of x. And then the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right of f of x. And then the limit as x approaches negative 1 overall of f of x. So, 
So right, you think you have to have less than negative one, that's a piece of the graph. And we're approaching the negative one from the left, and we're going to do the y values. No, 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 Let's take a look here. Okay. These limits, okay, are all negative two. The limits are all negative two. Okay. I saw some positive twos in there, but be careful. Okay. Let me let me ask one more question of you here. What is f of negative one? Two. Okay. F is I was precisely at negative one is two. But that's the only thing there. If you approach negative one, if your x values are approaching negative one from the left, you have to do it on the screen. If the x values are approaching negative one from the left, all these y values are negative two. There's, they're not even changing, right? From the right, all these y values are negative two. Again, they're not changing. And since the left hand and the right hand limit are in agreement, then the overall limit is also going to be negative 2. The only place where it equals 2 is precisely, precisely negative 1. Precisely this one point. Right there. Okay, precisely. Okay. So yeah, be careful there. That was just one point. You're looking at the overall kind of behavior of the graph. We're talking about those limits. Well, not overall, but the nearby behavior. Okay. Any questions for me on that? Four, five, six. I have a few more I want us to look at. Uh, and by a few more, I mean three more. Three more I want us to look at. Okay? So, this one's now going to incorporate F and G. The limit is X approaches zero of F of X plus G of X. The limit is x approaches 0 of f of x plus g of x. Any ideas about how we should go about trying to solve this? So, uh, Caleb, sorry, we're moving on to the this here, number 8. So we got, we're, we're combining now together f and g of x here. We're going to limit as x approaches 0 of f of x plus g of x. So, Shelby, what do you say? And then add them together, right? Yeah, that's it. Exactly right. Yeah, final limits as x approaches 0 of f. Final limit as x approaches 0 of g. And just add the two answers together. So, uh, Shelly, why don't you take away there? What's limit as x approaches 0 of f? Negative. Negative 2. Yes, it is. What's the limit as x approaches 0 of g? Yes, it is. And so it's just 1. Okay, without having to do... Oops. Not having to do anything crazy there. Pretty straightforward, yeah? All right. What about... The limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x plus g of x all over 3. about doing this one. What do you say? Say again, sorry? Yeah, yeah I'm going to divide by three. Yeah, I'm going to divide by right? So what is the limit, Zach, as x approaches one from the right of f? Oh, 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 well, okay, I mean, just give me what's the limit, just of f. What's the limit as x approaches one from the right of plain old f up here? 
must limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f. Negative 1. Negative 1, right? As we approach 1 from the right, we're approaching y value of negative 1. So this is going to equal negative 1 plus, and what's the uh, value of g as we approach 1 from the right? 1, right? There's 1 from the right. It's going to go down here towards that positive 1. So over 3, right, but then it's still 0. Yep. Very good. All right, last one. And I'll get you guys started on your assignment. The limit as x approaches negative 1 of g of f of x. So in this case, we want to evaluate these limits kind of like, you know, um, I don't know, in order, I guess I want to say. So um, the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f, what we said the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f was? Negative 2. So this is going to be essentially doing like g of negative 2. And what's g of negative 2? Well, we might have to kind of like estimate that one, right? What is g of negative 2 going to be? About what? Yeah, about about negative one. So, yep. There it is. Okay. Questions on any of that? All right. Let me get you guys started on your assignment then.